So I just wanted to show uh, the status of my 15 pound battle bot and we spent a lot of time making the parts on a CNC router. That's what most of the process is. In fact, on this piece, you can even see some of the spirals that are a result of the CNC toolpaths. So, in order to start, I'm actually going to attach some of the electronics to their respective chassis mounts. This is the battery we use. It's a lithium iron phosphate. We use a four cell which gives us a little over 13 volts to work with. Now I found that the best way to securely mount a battery is to use a hose clamp. All right. I also like to use a little bit of foam to cushion the battery. I don't like having metal contact with the battery because I don't want anything to get punctured. The hose clamp makes it very quick to loosen it and slide things in and out whenever you need to. Okay, I have my foam how I like it. And I'm going to tighten it so that it's snug, just enough that it will hold the battery in so it doesn't move if I shake it or anything. All right, the next of the electronics is the brushless motor and controller assembly. Now you'll notice that I've selected another hose clamp to fasten this as well. This will be connected to the front panel of the robot. First, I'll slide the front panel into the hose clamp. And now I'm going to use two 1032 screws to hold the motor in place. One thing to keep in mind when building a robot is that if you use the same type of screws more often, instead of choosing a new screw for every component, you'll find that you can reuse a lot of your tools, your drill bits, your taps, and even buy your screws in higher quantities and get them cheaper. In this case, we build most of the robot using a 1032 screw. The other thing I like about these hose clamps is that if I realize I have to move one of my components, all I have to do is loosen it just a little bit and then I can slide it right where it needs to be. I may adjust that later on once we put the chassis together. Okay, the way I designed this, the pieces 
fit together a bit like Legos. First, we have this little slot. And in order to hold that in, we use a longer screw. And there we go, that side is on. Let's attach the battery mount. I made a hole in the battery mount so that several of the wires from the motor controller can pass through. They need to make it to the other side because that's where the receiver will be. The battery mount fits into a little slot in the side panel. And that keeps it aligned. Let's do the other side now. Once again, we have it fitting into the slot. That'll hold it in place for now. We can always put more screws in if we need to. We'll attach the back panel. I'm using countersink screws for this, just like I did on the battery holder, because I want to make sure that if an enemy weapon strikes the back panel, it won't have any way to make contact with the screw unless it digs into the aluminum really deep. Alright, all four screws are in. I'm going to go around and make sure each one is nice and snug. Good, let's attach the front wheels now. Instead of using an axle, I decided to use a bolt that's the same size as the bore in this little urethane wheel. The nylon makes it spin very smoothly. I don't want to go too far as I'm tightening it, otherwise the wheel will not be able to spin freely.
for these bolts, I used grade 8 steel. Steel, the steel grade goes from 1 to 10, and so grade 8 is very strong. I wanted to make sure that they didn't bend at all and cause the wheel to stop rotating. Now we're ready to put the drive assembly in. Okay, it's in. Now there is some friction holding that in, but of course I'll put screws in to make sure that it won't come out. Once again, I use some longer 1032s. Well that's it for the chassis. The only thing that's left is to install the weapon and to put some armor on it. I'm removing this little white guard so that I have access to the half inch hole that will allow the weapon axle to slide in. This is the weapon that we're using with this bot. Now that the weapon is in, we can reinstall this guard and that will ensure that the axle cannot fall out. 